Once a year, visitors to Fairyland Pond in Concord might be in for a surprise. Colorful works of art are scattered throughout the surrounding forest. It's the annual Art Ramble, an outdoor exhibition put on by the local Umbrella Art Center. At first, the idea of random paintings and sculpture just popping up in the woods might seem a little bit out there, but in truth, art and nature have long made for surprisingly good company. After all, just a mile away, art and nature have been happily engaged since 1950. So yeah, we, it's our calling card and we showcase here over 50 large-scale sculptures and installations by regional, national and international artists. No discussion of outdoor art in New England would be complete without a visit to the De Cordova Museum and Sculpture Park in Lincoln, senior curator Sarah Montross. We are the largest outdoor sculpture park in the state of Massachusetts, in fact the largest outdoor sculpture park across New England for public access. Open year-round and spread out over a lavish 30-acre estate, the De Cordova has long celebrated the power of creativity unbound by museum walls. It's a, an experience of walking through and discovery and kind of enchantment that doesn't necessarily happen in the same way inside. Many pieces are permanent, like the Jim Dine Hearts and Andy Goldsworthy's Watershed. But visitors to the De Cordova will always encounter something new. Native American artist Jeffrey Gibson has erected a monumental ziggurat on the grounds to accompany his show inside the museum. So we want visitors to come and explore all sides of a sculpture that's in the park. And so that in and of itself, after so many months of being on a screen or living a life that's largely indoors, that alone, I think, can really jolt the senses. A multi-sensory experience can be found a bit further out route to in the town of Harvard. It's so beautiful and we care about it so much and we want to offer it in every way that we possibly can. In 2001, sculptor Linda Hoffman, a mother of three and newly divorced, was looking to hit the reset button. She had the crazy idea to buy an abandoned orchard. No farming experience, no orcharding experience. I didn't know the first thing about apples. 20 years later, Old Frog Pond Farm has blossomed. With help from an active network of holistic farmers and lots of hard work, Hoffman and her partner, Blaise Provatola, nursed the old orchard back to life. The first organic pick-your-own orchard in the state. Along the way, Hoffman planted her small sculptures all around the farm. Then invited her artist friends to contribute. Now the annual sculpture walk at Old Frog Pond Farm has become a popular harvest time tradition. I mean, there weren't so many outdoor sculpture parks and exhibits at Cordova, of course, but um, no one was really doing that. Art is everywhere on the farm, by the pond, back in the woods, overlooking a marsh. A few years ago, Paul Matisse's Olympic Bell, originally created for the 2004 Summer Olympic Games in Athens, found a permanent home here in the Frog Pond Forest. That's really important, to find that location that really lets the piece sing. The story of the orchard's rebirth and Hoffman's renewal is told in her new book, The Artist and the Orchard. It's about apples and art, sure, but on a deeper level, the book is about the formation of a community and the farmers, writers, artists, and spiritual seekers who have found a gathering space at the farm. Hoffman and Provatola host regular drum circles, poetry readings, sacred fire ceremonies, and solstice celebrations. Agriculture, art, and community is really what we're about. And so if people have something they want to offer, we're open to it. As for what's ahead for Old Frog Pond Farm, Hoffman isn't much of a planner. Instead, trusting her intuitions. Let it grow organically. <laughs>
Meanwhile, over in Wellesley, a visitor to the gardens at Elmbank might be excused for thinking they'd wandered into an asylum for phone zombies. But this is actually art. And there's more here than first meets the eye. That's really wild.